This past week on Thursday, the Pretoria High Court struck the names of embattled National Prosecuting Authority Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, Nomtrobo Jiba, and the Specialized Commercial Crime Unit Head, Lawrence Mkwebi, from the role of advocates following an application by the General Counsel of the Bar of South Africa. And this is due to the scathing criticism in different judgments about Jiba and Mkwebi's conduct when executing their official duties. An ally in the decision is Freedom Under Law, an NGO that has come out calling the decision by the court a vindication of the decision that was taken some years ago to challenge the unlawful and ostensibly corrupt refusal to prosecute suspended police criminal intelligence head General Richard Mzuli. The chairman of Freedom Under Law and the former Constitutional Court Justice, Judge Johann Krichler, joins us to discuss the decision, which comes after a long court battle to see the two removed. Judge Krichler, always a pleasure to talk to you. Lovely to see you again, Tim. And several topics, as much as I've put only this one on the agenda. It has been some time coming, this decision by the court, because you took it to the court. You were complaining then that they were not discharging their responsibilities yes. appropriately. And then now the court, uh, even the General Bar Council says they are not fit to be advocates, to be representatives of the law. It did not come as a surprise to you, but it took long. No, in, uh, unfortunately, court proceedings do take long. Yeah. But it's been a long battle. Uh, it's a, a very welcome outcome. It is not necessarily the end of the road. The two persons concerned are entitled to apply to appeal. They may be granted leave. Uh, I don't want to comment on the prospects. That would be improper. But, but the, the arguments by the General Bar Council, why did they want them to be disbarred as uh, advocates? Well, the, the then Director General, Koslisi uh, Kasana, yes. uh, asked the General Counsel to investigate them right. and to, if so advised, to, ask for their removal. So this comes from within the, the national... The NPA itself. In, yeah. in PA itself. Mm. The General Bar Council investigated and the court, after a long argument, uh, the two judges found that they'd lied. They'd lied under oath. They had tried to protect them duly. They had suppressed documents. Uh, they had tried to mislead the court. They had failed to give uh, proper leadership to their underlings in the department. They had, in fact, misled them, uh, all originally starting around Richard and Luli and mm. why he should be pro not be prosecuted. To this day, I don't know why they were so keen to block the prosecution. There are various theories I don't want to go into. But, but, but prosecutors, the NPA, uh, are responsible for prosecutions, right? Yes. Okay, meaning that they represent the state or the people? You and me. Of South Africa. You and me. So whenever you appear in any common law matter in particular, it's uh, the people versus well, the individual, I suppose. We don't say it that way. But, it's but the it means, state versus, yes. Yeah, but it means more or less that, yeah, right? Exactly that. So, Therefore, one would think that there should be a keenness on the part of the prosecution mm -hmm. once the police have done their work or whoever uh, lodges a complaint or a charge that they should want to prosecute. Certainly. Because the courts, the magistrates, the judges cannot do much unless those cases are brought before them. So in their case, you're suggesting they did not want to do their job. Is that the case? That's exactly it. And Tim, I'm glad you make the point about the prosecutors and judges. Prosecutors are, in a sense, more important than judges. You know, judges must speak in open court. They must give their reasons. They're subject to appeal. Uh, you and I can go to the court and see how things are done and criticize the judge. Mm. A prosecutor takes decisions in the privacy of her or his office. Mm. They're not obliged to report to the public why they decide things. And therefore, the integrity of a prosecutor is crucial. Mm. And uh, we have it built into Section 179 of the Constitution, the high moral obligation of the National Prosecuting now, Service. 
Nkoli Singasana was the head temporarily yeah. of the NPA. He was in the job for, what, 18 months? Or yeah, less, 20 or so, months in all, I think. And was paid out uh, how much money? Just a little over 17 million rand to go so that Jiba could sit back in the chair and we could now get in Sean Abrams. Is it reasonable then, therefore, Judge, to say that uh, Nasana was paid out so that he does not continue to probe this matter? Oh, yes, that's exactly the point. He came in and he said, what has been happening with Nduli? Bring me the files. They had trouble in getting the files. So much so, he had so much opposition from Jiba Mfrebi that he instigated or applied or suggested to the National uh, Advocacy Controlling Body, the General Council, that they look at these two guys. He recommended to the minister, please, in terms of the statute, have the president investigate this woman, have a disciplinary proceeding started against her. Instead of that happening, and Kasana finds himself at the receiving end of disciplinary proceedings. He wanted to clean out the house when he was there. That proved uncomfortable to too many people, and he was paid to go. Now, Mr. Sean Abrams was then appointed to that position. And then he promoted Ms. Non... He didn't Kubo. promote her, yeah. he just gave her the oversight of all prosecutions okay. in the country all right. and stopped the investigation against her yeah. and uh, gave her a go-ahead. All is forgiven. You've got the power to prosecute. So what should then the head of the NPA be doing given the, the judgment by the court this past week? Oh, Besides so the fact that they can appeal and all of those things. But let's say there's no appeal. What would be the expected... Uh, decision or action on the part of the head of the NPA? He should not appeal. It's not his uh, case at all. Yeah. It's a case by the organized profession of advocates against two of his yes. staff members. Yes. Yeah. I would believe that it is, it's a very difficult decision, but he cannot leave them in charge. And I was astounded to see a press statement issued by the office of the NPA saying that they appreciated the way these people had behaved in upholding the, the good name of the National Prosecuting Authority. These are people who have been found to have behaved like scoundrels and to have let the prosecuting authority, the courts, the administration of justice and the country to have left them in the lurch by their own pursuit of a personal protection of a man who was unworthy of it. The reaction on the part of the government through the Minister of Justice so far, what do you make of it? What should I'm, they be I'm, saying? I make nothing of it. The minister is in an awkward position. He's at the receiving end of what the uh, head of the prosecuting authority says to him. They have put them on special leave, the two of them. I would have said they should have been suspended immediately and disciplinary proceedings against them should have recommenced, which was suspended when in Kasana was given uh, his marching orders. Now, this relates predominantly to the case of Mr. Richard Mdluli. Where, where does that leave the case then? Mr. Mdluli is currently being prosecuted. Uh, how competently and how energetically, I don't know, on one category of cases relating to the death of a man when he was still competing with this gentleman mm. for the affections of a woman. Mm. Mm. That's intimidation and murder and the like. Mm. The other category of cases relates to uh, allegations of serious corruption and abuse of state funds, the, the, this secret slush fund that crime intelligence has. Those, to the best of my knowledge, have simply not been prosecuted on the basis we were told some time ago in Freedom Under Law, because the information is classified and the Commissioner of Police will not allow us to use that information. That's bogus. If you have stolen money, if you have been alleged to have stolen money, the prosecution should be given access to the records. We trust, 
and we will actually press the prosecuting authority now to resume with due vigour the investigation and the prosecution of General Lumbluli, who incidentally uh, was <laughs> arrested by Anwar Sadat <laughs> yeah, 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 well, uh, and yeah. Shadrik Sabir, yes. uh, where have they gone? And Johan Boysen was intimately involved in the investigations against him. Look at, at poor General Boysen. Uh, Mdluli is not a man that you should try to touch without very strong gloves. So, how much... And Dramat is not in the job now. No, Dramat has been gone. Sabir has gone. Boysen is fighting desperately to hang on to his job. And then... Uh, uh, Robert McBride, Sissoko, uh, Kuba of IPED, who said Dramat and Sabia have done nothing wrong. Where are they today? In Civi Street. They've, they've all been given What, what does all orders. this mean? I mean, you, you, oh. you know, as freedom under law, you look at the different things and you can make sense of, or, or, or at least connect the pieces, so to speak. What, what, is, what is this? What, I mean, in summary. <laughs> I can, t I can connect it to this extent that I say it's, a, it's a, a snake pit in which there are very, very venomous animals uh, and they are connected. It is not unconnected to taking control of Danel. It's not unconnected with taking control of SARS, getting rid of the competent people within those, uh, SABC... Uh, SAA, we have this general campaign discernible to take over control, to get the decent people out, to get the burning and Lamezas in, who will bring in their compliant staff members and get rid of the old guard, clean them out. Ivan Pille, Johan van Lochrenberg, Peter Rich, the people in SARS, Tsamaya, go. We want to replace you with new people. It's, it's all connected. Why and by whom I leave to you and the, the viewers to work out for yourself. Well, you've mentioned the uh, people who worked at SARS, Ivan Pillay, Lochrenberg and, uh, and others. And we know that the Minister of Finance himself is under investigation by the Hawks. I don't believe he is. There's no investigation. What, what do you think is happening then in, in that case? And, and of course, there's a new book that's come out uh, from the so-called rogue unit at uh, SARS. So, you know, is there a case to answer, you think, from what you've seen and what you've heard? I have no doubt whatsoever as a responsible retired judge to say that the case against Minister Gordon is nonsense. It is being pursued for motives that I do not understand, but what I can say is that there is nothing to pursue. If anybody doubts that, I recommend to them they buy this book and read it. This book by van Lochlenberg gives the whole history of the so-called secret rogue unit that was reported to Parliament, that was reported in the, in the annual uh, accounts of, of the department that was authorised by the minister and the deputy minister to be introduced that did absolutely nothing that it should not have done. Why is Gordon being pursued? Why is a policeman calling on him when he's busy working on the national budget? Come on. It's not a question of nobody's above the law. If they did that to, uh, to you, to me, we would resent it and we would say this is an abuse of the law. In the case of uh, the minister, the implications for the country are tremendous. Why? Don't ask me. But what I do know is the reasons can't be good and the cause is bad. There is nothing that Minister Gordon did that could interest any policeman properly advised as to the facts and the law. Judge Johan Krichler, thank you very much for talking to us. Lovely to talk to you, Tim. Much appreciated. Stay well. Thank you.